Hey, it's your boy J Rose, the foreign kid, Mr. East Columbus stand up himself. I am jumping off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Hunter Sally and T. Now Sandy coming, I've been patiently waiting. Got a grind harder where I'm from, just to make it. All right, so we got my boy. J Rose, the foreign kid, jumping off the porch with us today. Welcome, man. What's going down? Man, I'm feeling good, bro. How about you, man? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Yeah, for sure. Man. Yeah, it looked like you brought the, you know, the whole Ohio with you, man. man I brought the whole hundred solid with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's 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 what it is. Like we definitely, we definitely, uh, we definitely moving and we putting on for real, for real. For sure, man. You wanna go ahead and introduce everyone so people know who's sitting up here with you, man? Oh uh, yeah, so uh dang, there's a lot of people, but uh <laughs> this is my guy Ron, you know what I'm saying? Uh Columbros Auto Sales, that's his business, you know what I'm saying? Uh we got the producer Dylan Young Deal Music, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Mo, this is Mo Money, part of the management team for 100 Sally and T. Uh Kai, this is my sister, like, you know what I'm saying? She, 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 the whole support system, you feel me? And then we got artists on the 100 Solid NT. We got TRBC Rico. We got TRBC Vaughn. Shout out to Mo Visions. This the cameraman, you know what I'm saying? He do, shout out to him, cause he do a lot of, a lot of videos and a lot of just stuff with the camera, you know what I mean? Uh, my nigga Brazy, like, you know what I'm saying? He another part of the team that's 100 Solid, like, and he, he, he bringing something different to the table. And then my cousin Tone back there, that's the doctor right there. Like, like a real doctor? Yeah, yeah doctor, real doctor? doctor. The real doctor, you know what I'm saying? He we can't really say too much. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? He, he the doctor. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and then this Mo, you know what I'm saying? Mo, this Mo too. Mo too. Because <laughs> the can support be, system, it can you know what I'm saying? Too. Family, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we in here. Okay. So. Nah, so welcome everyone. So, a hundred solid, man. Talk about you know how, how this started, and man, what was your vision for it? Uh, so I had got locked up, and you know some people had told. Uh, I ain't gonna say no names because that shit in the past, but uh, you know, I took it on the chin and just basically just did them seven years. You know what I'm saying? And just manned up because I was raised by the cold. You feel me? Like I know, like. When you're in these streets, you know what you're dealing with, you know what risk you're taking and stuff like that. So, but when I got in there, it was just like, everybody was like, dang, like, you honey, you solid, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you ain't say nothing, like, you just kept it trill, like, you just, you know what I mean? You just took it on the chin. Then one day I was just like, dang, like, honey, solid, that's it. Like, I'm, I'm a hundred, like, that's all I know. That's all I was raised by, like, just being a hundred and just being solid, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody, they be capping, bro. Like, motherfuckers ain't for the streets, for real, for real. Yeah, so you came up with this while you were locked up? Yeah, I came up with this while I was locked up. Like, I just figured, like, you know, the whole little team and, you know what I'm saying, the logos and just a $100 Benjamin Franklin and I was just like, fuck it, we just gonna put the little <laughs> sh thing on there and just, that's it, 100 solid, like, so. That's just how I, I, I look at it like everybody that's around and that's on the porch or whatever is just solid to me. You know what I'm saying? As far as like support system, family, brothers, like, you know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing else that I want around me, but motherfuckers that's just doing what I'm doing that's on the same page. Yeah. And you actually signed your first artist while you were locked up, right? Yeah, yeah, he couldn't make it, he couldn't be here, man. Shout out to uh, Prada Jackson, man. He all the way from Canton, Ohio. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? and. Uh, he, could, he couldn't make it. But unfortunately, like I told him, we was gonna step for him and hold it down for him. For sure, man. Yeah. So the east side of Columbus, that's where you from, right? Yep, east side of Columbus. All right, man, so fill me in, man. Talk about the way of life, the culture out there, man. What be going man, on, on so the east side? It was just like me growing up, the foreign kid, like Filipino. I always tell everybody I'm 10% black, you know what I'm saying? But uh, not just being raised in, 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 my, in my household, it was just like a broken home, you know what I'm saying? My mom, she full Filipino. And uh, I was just raised on the east side of Columbus. I was going to, you know what I'm saying, all the schools out there and just getting, just being in that environment of just knowing like, this is how you gotta do to survive. And you know, it's other things in life that you know, that you might wanna do, but 
in my situation, I couldn't, you know what I'm saying, make that happen like that. So I was just in the struggle. I was always in the struggle. So I always had to survive and figure out how I was going to do this shit without no father figure or, you know, being in a bandit home, you know what I'm saying, shit like that. Like, just in a family, like, they not really my support system growing up. Like, they might want it to, but I figured this shit out, you know what I mean? Yeah. Did you have any big homies or anyone out there at that time to kind of guide you, or was you really uh, trying to get this shit out the mud yourself, man? Huh? It wasn't no big homies for real, for real, because, like, just as a, as a youngin', like, as a jit, like, I ain't really, I really wasn't no follower, for real, for real. I probably, like, was real observant, and I seen, like, everybody doing stuff, and that's how I learned, for real, for real. So I was really raised from the east side of the streets, you know what I'm saying? And everything that was going on out there, like, I just took in and just was, like, this is how I had to make my life and how I had to make a way for myself. Yeah. And is there a big uh, Filipino population in Columbus? It is, but on the music tip, no. Mm. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to put on for that whole little culture, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> that's what I'm trying to do for real, for real. Okay. And what were some of your hobbies as a kid? Like, were you into sports? Were you always into music? Or what was you doing, man? Besides uh, trying to survive, obviously. <coughs> I was always playing basketball. You know, you had other kids like, oh, man, you trash, you trash. But, you know, as long as I knew I could make that motherfucking basket from the three-point line, that's all I cared for, <laughs> real, for real. So that's all I, I, I just wanted. But as uh, far as, like, taking it, you know what I'm saying, serious and, and taking it fur, further, like, in my life, like, I ain't see that. Yeah. Because I knew I had other stuff. Like, I had to grow up too fast. You that's know what I'm saying? True. When would you say you did jump off the porch all the way at the time? Man, I was about, like... 12, 13 years old. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Cause I ain't had, I had a, I came up from a broken home, you feel me? So it wasn't really nobody in the streets or nobody under my household telling me this. My mom, she was telling me this and that, you feel me? But other than that, it wasn't as, as, as tough as, you know, that I needed. So of course I jumped off the porch and just started bumping my head and started learning by myself, like who to hang with, what to do, how to make money, you know what I'm saying? Like, mama couldn't buy me Jordans every time Saturday came for the lock-ins. Mm. So it was just like, I had to find my way. Yeah, you mentioned bumping your head. Like, I understand, like, you had to go sit down a few times as a juvenile, right? Yeah, I was, you know, I was in the stealing cars. Oh, shit. I was in the stealing cars, like, once I figured out how to steal a car, like, that's what I was into. And then after I got a little bit older, I started meeting different people in juvenile. And then that's when the money came, started coming in of me, you know what I'm saying, making money on the drug side. That's it. I mean, that's just, that, that's just how it came out. Yeah. I ain't want to, but I had to. Yeah. So you mentioned you had to sit down for seven years, right? Yeah. So how old were you at the time? I was 28. Oh, shit. Yeah, I was 28 when it happened. True. So what, what's your reaction when they go ahead and hand down that sentence to you? Bro? Man, like, no lie, I took my shit all the way to the box. Hmm. I could have beat the case, but my co-defendant snitched. Oh, shit. How many co-defendants did you have? It, I just had one, but then I had somebody else on the streets telling too. God damn. So when uh, I took it to the box or whatever the case was, they gave me seven. I thought seven was a big number. Hearing seven while you right. were in the courtroom, like hearing <laughs> seven, I'm like, oh my God. Man, like, that shit shocked me, Knocked sparks out of me. So it was just like, I, as much as I wanted to cry, like, dang, seven years in jail, cry, bro. I couldn't cry, I couldn't give up. I couldn't, you know what I mean? That's I couldn't like do none shocker. of that. Yeah. So I had, to, I had to take it on the chin. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Take it on the chin. But, and, and, and that's why I, as, as years went by and I started growing mentally, and maturing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I knew like, okay, I'm gonna do it the right way this time. Yeah. Where you at mentally during those seven years? Are you staying positive or are you kind of down on yourself? Oh, uh, nah, uh, it was, it was, it was tough. It was tough, man. Like, you know, it was times when you would call home. It was times when nobody answered. It, 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 it was times where you wrote people on the JPay, nobody replied. 
until you made a way to get your own phone in that motherfucker and you looked on Instagram like, damn, these niggas all over Instagram, bro, and they can't write me back. They got their phones in their hands. Like, well, you couldn't pick up. You feel me? But, no lie, I had a good, you know what I'm saying, a good, nice little support that, that helped me mentally, you know what I'm saying? Even though it, was, it couldn't have been financially all the time, mm-hmm. it was mentally because, you know, people was sitting there doing stuff that other people that I thought was my people's, you know what I'm saying, that didn't do. It was supposed to keep it 100 solid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotta keep it a buck. So, I learned from that. Yeah, they say them hard times is going to reveal who's really down for you, man. Right, right, right. But it, it, it just it just it help you it help you move better when you get on the streets. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it's like you could know those is your homies. You could have been homies with them since the sandbox. But when you get older and you see certain people change and do certain stuff now, it's just like you can't really be mad because this is their way of growing up. Mm-hmm. But I know the way that I grew up. You feel me? So I knew, like, I knew that snitching shit was not in no type of lane for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I saw people get beat up for snitching. I heard people getting killed for snitching. So it's just like, why you want to go through all that? Just be real and just take it on the chin and you're going to grow as a man. Take your motherfucking yeah. time. And nowadays, it seems like the, the rats, they, they glorifying this shit. Man. Man. Like, they have no shame in doing this shit. It's, 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 it's. it's real it's just real crazy crazy (laughs) it's real crazy like the game so messed up we don't even want nothing to do with it right like like for now like like on some real life shit like we just learned how to come home and do it smarter you know what i'm saying and when we do it smarter we know we could survive the streets yeah so that's how we look at it we try to do everything whatever we do everybody you see on this porch we do it in a positive way because we know it's going to get, you know what I'm saying? The outcome is going to be better down the way. Absolutely, man. Yeah. So as your sentence is winding down, man, like what's your plan with like when you come home? Then? I knew it was crunch time. Like I already knew what it was. Like, man, once they open these gates. <laughs> and the pressure on. Hey, I and told, I told Rondo, I said, hey, and hey, the when they open on. these gates, the I'm not going to quit rapping. The pressure was I'm going to keep going and keep going and keep going. But it's on. just like, it's like trying to, trying to, you know what I'm saying, separate yourself from other, other, other stuff that's going on as far as in the music. It's like, I know it's going to help me stand out. Yeah. So, but that was my goal. I already knew once them gates opened, I was going to hit the ground running. I just yeah, knew, I, know I just going. knew which way to go this time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. The thing is, we had the blueprint. We definitely had the blueprint. Yeah. JR put it together. For real. That's my dog. He put For it real. together. We sat in that, we sat in that cell. Y'all was locked up together? Yeah, for yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for together. sure. Is that where y'all met or did y'all know each yeah, other before? Yeah, that's where we met. That's where we met. That's where we met. So, it's, 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 it's a good thing. We definitely man. sat in there together and went over songs after songs. Uh, like, strategy. Hey, he was my biggest critic, though, in, in, in the joint. He used to be mad at me. Like, nah, I used to be nah, mad as <laughs> fuck. I used to go to a cell. Hey, what was my favorite line, though? I want everything. Man. I can't listen to that shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't listen to that shit driving down the motherfucking freeway, nigga. Hey, but, Turn that shit off. But he definitely, he, you know what I'm saying? Shit. He definitely, he definitely put that in my mindset of, you know, thinking out the box when I make music. Yeah. If I can do 100 miles an hour to that motherfucker, it's a hit. Yeah. Oh, hey, we got a couple of them. Right. Because I'm doing a dash. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Just yeah. like that. Did y'all come home around the same time then, or? No, I got out a year before, Jay. Okay, okay. And the con- I think we talked on the phone like maybe like maybe three times. But mm-hmm. the last conversation, he had called me like, man, I'm about to get out. And I had told him, I said, bro, like, play the net. Like, you great. I ain't never told this guy he was good. Like, from day one, it's my dog. In the joint, I told him, like, yeah. JR, you great. Like, motherfuckers start, start out young, but we missed, we missed a big chunk. Like, Definitely I, a big chunk. I can chunk. tell you, he a positive-ass guy, man. Listen to his music. That shit real. Yeah. That shit real. I'm telling you. I hit the next button on his shit a lot of times. He be mad as fuck. <laughs> like, 
Bro, that nah, shit hard. Real. Like, nah, that ain't it. For real. And guess what I do? I go back to the cell and crumble that paper. Like, real <laughs> shit. Because I be sitting And go there, harder. I, I sit in that <laughs> motherfucker like, yeah, I'm riding down 71. Like, yeah, nah, that ain't it. Next. <laughs> Nigga, it's over with. I can't drive fast to that shit. Man. All right. Shit. So when you came home, did you record any of those songs that you had uh, written? Because nah, a lot was, of times people it was, say they it don't. Was, it was a couple of them. Okay. It was, it was what you just dropped that was fire, though. Yeah, that's, it was a couple of them. Uh, the one that got you that ticket. Right. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. Like, I had yeah. I had a mindset of coming True. home and just, you know what I'm saying, just thinking of the strategy, you know what I'm saying, of how to do this shit. Yeah. And I didn't want to just come home and just every song talk about jail, 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 but it was like, I still made every song talking about jail, jail, jail. And that's what made though. us, though. Like, that, that prison shit made, like, because after the phone, after wifey, Mo, after after the phone cut off, it's just us and that motherfucker. We in there smoking. Like, we sitting there chilling. Huh? And we was really thinking. And like, this nigga really writing music. And I'm like, bro, I'm tired of hearing these fucking beats, man. <laughs> like, everybody know I don't watch TV or listen to shit when I'm, at, when I'm chilling. Man. I was like, man, I'm tired of hearing this shit, bro. But that shit fired up. That shit fired. It came out. I was. It. It took a. It took a minute for me to understand my craft and how I was gonna go about it for real. Yeah. For real. Like, so for real. It been. A, it was a lot of critiquing and, you know, criticism. And he was rapping off like some old ass shit, bro. Yeah. Like that shit I was, was annoying just, as fuck. It was. Just, it was just. You know. It was just <laughs> like, man, cut that shit off. But it's fired though. But nah, cut that shit off. Like, nah, it's nigga lights out, nigga, it's over with. What was that first studio session like when you came home then? Was you rusty at all or was you like I was rusty as fuck. Yeah. Just because the simple fact that, you know, I wasn't used to the sound no more. Hmm. So that's why I was saying like for real, for real, like when I came home and it was just rusty, like I just knew that it was gonna get better because I got used to getting back in the studio and start feeling my feel and how I'm vibing and trying to find my sound. So when I found my sound, I was like, man, I'm about to run with it. He really an artist though. You will have to see him in the studio for real. Cause he be saying some shit I don't even know about. Like punch in and artist. like sure. the, he, JR, he really go with J Rose. What you call foreign <laughs> kid. Like yeah, that's J Rose. But he really, um, he really good at what he do. Okay. JR, he really great. So how'd you link uh, with your producer Dylan here? So I had a, uh, a old, you know what I'm saying, friend of the family or whatever <laughs> hit me up. And he was like, he was like, hey bro, you wanna jump on this song? And I was like, I was like, yeah, I'll jump on the song. So when I jumped, when I came to go jump on the song, that's how I met Dylan. But it's so crazy because like I told Dylan when I first met Dylan, I'm like, damn bro, I'm following you, bro. Oh, you was already following him? <laughs> yeah, him I was following him, but I didn't, <laughs> I was, when I had came home, I started like networking and trying to find out who I needed to follow for his music. Mm. So when I, you know what I'm saying, boom, that happened. I recorded my feature with uh, bro. And then next thing you know, I locked in a session with him. And then after I locked in that session with him, hey Dylan, my first five hour session for the first two hours, we just talked. Mm. We was just building. You definitely tell that story to everybody. I tell everybody that because <laughs> like, I want it, like, like the like, people that, that I got around me, I want them to know that everybody, you know what I'm saying, everybody got a position. I'm just trying to help y'all, you know what I'm saying, and make this shit happen. So it's like. And Dylan definitely will hit that next button too. He's like, nah, I ain't putting that on my <laughs> shit. Like, nah. I and I told like, him, but see, <laughs> this the thing I told Dill. I told Dill that what I wanted to do, you feel me? Yeah. As far as like my vision of 100 Sally and T. So he seen my vision and you know, ever since then we've been locked in and we've been just going. So a lot of the songs that's out right now on all platforms is Young Bill Music beat. Okay. Yeah, right. producer, man. yeah for mm -hmm. sure. And he did, listen, we have done several shows in the city and I can tell you that JR music is the clearest, man. You gonna hear our shit from a mile away, man. Clear. Just like that, like Dylan did that. Yeah, and that, and that first session we had, you know, like he said, he just, you know, he told me his whole story, his whole, his whole vision, you know, like, like, like he said, for the first two, three hours of the five hour session, he just, he was just telling me his plan and, you know, I was, I was definitely on board with it and I was definitely on board with, you know, helping him, you know, make his vision and story come to life because that's really what I do is, you know, I help people 
you know, tell their stories and, and make it come to life in a in a in in music form, you know what I mean? So when he told me his story, I was definitely on board with it, and we've been locked in ever since. How long ago was that that you guys locked in there? That was, was like, like two, two, two years two ago. Two years ago. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah about two years ago. ago. Okay. Yeah. About two years ago. I can tell you this, Dilla, he real quiet. You don't really hear him in the studio until he say like, nah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that a creative that ain't process. Ain't it, bro. I'm trying to tell you like, nah, that ain't hold on. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna listen to it like three times. And he gonna do his thing. Like, <laughs> He so really do his thing. What's that chemistry like when you guys are cooking up then and creating together? Man, Man. So, go ahead. Nah, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I mean, usually I send him a pack of beats, you know what I mean, and and he he writes to it and and you know he comes to the studio with with stuff prepared and and lays it down and you know really you know obviously like he said like you know if there's something I hear that that needs to be critiqued I'm gonna let him know you know what I mean but. Hey, but man, other, he'd get pissed off too. Like, nah, this ain't it. Like that one song. He like, nah, this ain't it. Like, nah, I don't want this. What was we recording? Oh, was I'm not sure. He like, he like, nah, this I just one. Be in the moment. <laughs> he kept cutting it out. I was, I was watching him. He kept cutting it. Like, nah, this one trash. Re-record it. Re-record it. Re-record it. Then when we finally found it, he like, yeah, this it. I it approve definitely. it. Like, That's what a real producer do. Right. Does yeah, though, you know? Of nah, but yeah. see, you gotta think though. And that's what I tell every artist, every producer, everybody that's just be around me. Like, you got guys that look at what they do as a passion. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? But then you got guys that just know that since it's a trend and everything is going good with music, uh, let me go ahead and just get a quick dollar. But when you dealing with certain people that you, you, you know what I'm saying, that you deal with, that's why it took me two hours to sit down and chop it up with this man because I wanted him to know, like, I'm not just coming in here buying studio time and just being a rapper, right. you feel me? Like, I wanted him to know, like, I'm an artist. I'm not just a rapper, I'm an artist. So I wanted him to know, like, every time we come with something, I'm gonna always aim for a hit. So I'm never gonna sit there and show another man that I'm just wasting his time on his hard work. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's so, why we don't sp uh, spare none, like, we, even Mo, Mo too. She she the biggest music critic, right? Biggest here. critic. Like, well, you got no yes men on your like, team, huh? Real shit. Nah, like, I, gotta, I, don't, I don't want no yes men. Yeah, you gotta be the you, you, to, you know? we gotta come with that. that. I want like, everybody to. Sh I want everybody that that I know. I I basically surrounded myself around you, and being real, regardless, should show you like you know what I'm saying, like. You got to be able to accept criticism from inside because the outside going to, you it's, know what I'm saying? It's, it's easy to go, you know what I'm saying, to, to all your little niggas or, or just pop up and like, hey, hear my song. And everybody like, oh, yeah, just because they, you know what I'm saying, just because it's you. But I be wanting motherfuckers to be like, nah, Tell the truth. Me. If yeah. that shit ain't it, say it ain't it. Yeah. Like, real, real shit. Yeah. Yeah. Got to. Like it ain't, and oh, you got to be able to hear it from us because if I'm saying it, but everybody else gonna say that shit. We gotta yeah. come with heat, and that's all we've been dropping. Like, we not facts. coming out. We not coming out halfway. Everybody, man, that's a hundred percent, hundred yeah. solid. Yeah. Man, we coming out one hundred percent. Yeah. So talk about this underdog song and video you just put out. Man, uh, I don't know. Everybody always asks like how I come up with it and what was my motivation to it. It's just like, you know. When it's really your passion to do music and you don't find that out until a later time in your life, you get what I'm saying? It'd be like, damn, I really got a passion for this shit. And it just be like, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna keep rapping, keep rapping, keep rapping, right? People will, they will sit there and be like, ah, he okay, you know what I'm saying? You gonna get a lot of that, you get what I'm saying? And I, and I accept that. But when you start seeing and knowing how hard you going with your music and what you really talking about, it's about lyrics, you know what I'm saying? It's about what you talk about. Because then you gonna know, all right, I'm just, don't nobody wanna see it, so I'm underrated, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just label myself that. Mm -hmm. probably, underrated. It probably took him like five minutes to write that. Yeah, shit. Like, JR, he really, 
I ain't yeah. like no no that bullshit. Dude, I tell you, I gave him an idea of writing a jingle. Like five minutes, he called me like, yeah, it's done. <laughs> I said, what? He said, yeah, it's done. <laughs> and we're recording it tomorrow. Like, what? <laughs> and don't even, he don't even know that he on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I did a, I did, I did a jingle for his car lot. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm like, so he just fast forward back to what he was talking about. So he's like, yeah. I'm like, we're recording it tomorrow. So he's like, all right. I said, if you ain't doing nothing, pull up on me. You know what I'm saying? Just check it out. So boom, we get in there in the studio session. I'm recording my part or whatever. I'm like, okay, Dylan, that sounds good. Ron, your turn. <laughs> he's like, what you mean? Right. Right. <laughs> And so he like, that shit harder than what you, hey, listen, that shit hard. Like, <laughs> for somebody, I don't know, I don't got confidence like that in my voice, but our team, yeah. like JR, and the rest of our team, hunting solid, like, we pushing. And we coming with heat. Oh, no, we definitely coming with heat. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's just, that's, and that came with the whole underdog song. Like, that was my motivation to show people that, you know, if you're not going to listen to me, I'm going to make you listen to me. You're going to feel us. You're going to feel it. Yeah. Like, period. Because we applying a lot of pressure. You go here in the club. In the we, club. Are, we applying sure. a lot of pressure. JR, the foreign kid, and Vaughn, and Rico, we applying a lot of pressure. And Brazy, we applying a lot of pressure, man. Vaughn. Like, Vaughn, Rico, Brazy, JR, Hunter Solid. Yeah, talk about these other artists. Like, how, how do you discover them? Oh, man. And so it's crazy, right? Like, it's just a different story for all of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, uh, it's just everybody that's already, you know, locked in as far as, like, on the business side. And, like, so they saw that, how I was taking music real serious. And then they plugged me in with... TRBC Vaughn and TRBC Rico, which Mo did, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we had a studio session. You know, they Came started. Out with some heat. It, it, Fast. It, it, it was just, it was just like, okay, this is, Fast, this is how they, though. you know what I'm saying? This is it busting. So, Fast. boom. So then we just, I basically had a conversation with them because I let them know the vision. You know, being young, if somebody tell you a vision and it sound viable to a, a, a young motherfucker, like, you gonna pursue that because you, you know the vision now. Or you might know it even better. So that's how, I, that's how I was looking at things. Like, I'm like, all right, cool. Boom, we locked in now. So me, TRB, uh, TRBC uh, Vaughn, we got a single out called Blessings. It's on all platforms. Uh, Bags Up by TRBC. Rico, it ain't, it's in the making. So we about to go ahead and drop that. Exactly. But that's, that's definitely in the making. Uh, my guy Brazy right here, he jumped on a, a, a song called Feeling Myself. And it's, it's, it's like a, 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 it's a different version of Brazy's version of the actual version. So yeah, like this everybody, this everybody stuff is fire, and it's bro. Fire. Brazy found us for real. He like he found y'all. Yeah. Nah, nah, uh, nah. The story, the story on me and Brazy is uh we got a we got a mutual friend, and uh he had oh, called yeah. me one day like hey I got a guy like I feel like y'all two y'all gonna be hard on a, on a song, so I'm like all right bet. So he sent me the uh he sent me the number. We started chopping it. This man so busy. He's so busy <laughs> that, but like, I, like he'll hit me up. Hey, when we gonna link up? I'm like, hey, bro, yeah, we're gonna link up tomorrow. He's like, all right, bet. So I put in my schedule, I'm gonna link up with this guy. Don't see him till probably like three more days, but then right. hear from him for three more days. Right. But he then, definitely pop up. But bro. then when we finally when we finally <laughs> locked up, in, bro. when we finally locked in, like, you know what I'm saying? We made some heat. So right. I was like, oh, okay, bet. So that's how Brazy came along. Right. Shout out to my guy Ra. You know what I'm saying? That's 
Like that's the mutual. Crazy fan. definitely pop up. Like yeah. you know you, he just do. Right. At the right time. Like, yeah. So what's these sessions like with all you guys in there? You know together creating cooking up in there. Ask Dylan that. What we book like? What we start doing like <laughs> six hour sessions? Yeah. Like, yeah, man. When, when they're ready to lock in, you know, they just they just hit me up. You know, they usually do a five hour session. And How and many songs we just, do we get done though, Dill? Oh, man. Usually, I'm, last one we probably made like seven, eight. Yeah. In, in so one I, session. I put a I put a five hour session in one time and just did like seven, eight songs. You know what I'm saying? I and then we got heat. the next five hour session, like everybody started putting in their own two hours, two hours. You know what I'm saying? So everybody started building shit. Yeah. We definitely got heat. We can yeah. keep dropping. And, and, and J Rose is a writer, you know what I mean? So, so you know, when he comes to me, you know, he's, he's his shit's already he's, ready. Huh? Yeah, so it's already ready. So it's like we can easily knock out like five songs in, in a couple hours just like that, just because. You know, it comes prepared and, and, you know, we just knock it out. We get that, we get that sound right, you know, knock out the hook, knock out the verse, you know, and just, just like that, you know, we got, we got a whole EP done in a, in a session, you know what I mean? Right. Just like that. I ain't gonna lie, when, Je when he lock in, when it's, uh, when it's that time, like, when he lock in and he write music, he just got his phone and he got his mouth. <laughs> Man. <laughs> hey, listen though, it's the truth. And listen, he gonna stand and he gonna walk. And he paced like they porches only like maybe not even five feet. So he walking back and forth, but he writing. Then when he done, he like how that sound? Yeah. Oh, that's fire. Like, right. Yeah. Like yeah, right. That's fire. <laughs> So For tell sure. us about this new song with Poison Ivy that you got coming out. Oh uh, man, I uh, I had this one. I just man, it's just like I had one of the one sessions where I just recorded just the hook type mm -hmm. shit. You know how I be yep. sometimes if I don't got the verses, I'll just go record the hook. <laughs> so and then I when I recorded the hook, <laughs> I was like, all right, and I just kept listening to it, kept listening to it, cause. I like to put a little thought into my shit. You know what I mean? How long you been, uh, when did you write this hook to this song? Because uh, he should have been did this one, like. Yeah, I should have been did this one. I was, I was just, really I had trying. it up on the shelf. I've been really trying to get him to do this song because I like the song. He so, got a lot of songs that, yeah. Yeah, so, so basically, like, when I came up with feeling myself, it was just like, all right, I can hear this in a club or I can hear it, you know what I'm saying? Because it's hard for me to actually make a club song <laughs> Cause I still be speaking about real shit that's going on. Like I be wanting to speak about real shit. So it's like, in order to take me out of that zone for a club song, I'm like, I gotta think like, you know what I'm saying? I'm outside, like, yeah. <laughs> me so. that, that just, it just, it just made me like, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm doing this music shit. And I'm, and I'm really grinding, putting the footwork in with the team and everything. Like we doing it together. It made me be like, you just start feeling yourself, man. You start feeling, you know, you don't get too big headed, you know what I mean? You just know like you in the right, in the right lane, you feel me? So that's how that song came about. And so I had, uh, I had shot the beat out to Brazy. So when I had shot the beat out to Brazy, you know, like I said, he a busy man. So it took, I didn't hear from him, so I didn't know what he was doing. I didn't know if he wrote his verse to it or whatever. So I'm like, all right, cool. So boom, he ended up calling me like, yeah, bro, I got a, uh, I got the verse for it. And I'm like, all right, bet. But I'm like, I already done threw somebody on the damn song. So I was like, dang. And he like, who? He, I'm like, Poison Ivy. He like, who? I'm like, Boosie Thunder. You know what I'm saying? So when he heard it, he was like, he's like, man, I can't lie, Fuzz. What'd you say, Fuzz? I can't be mad at you. <laughs> Just let me get a part of this song. <laughs> so I'm like, bet. That's why we got two verses. Okay. And it's it's basically like a uh, it's like an episode one, episode two type shit. Like I'm gonna really put this, you know what I'm saying? And my guy right here, Mo Visions, we gonna put this shit together tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Are oh, you shooting it tomorrow? Tomorrow. I'm shooting it tomorrow. Okay. So. Uh, I don't know, like we just, we in Atlanta and we just trying to figure out some nice little spots to shoot at and shit like that. Cause we ain't from here. That's it. 
So we on her her schedule, so we got to make it, you know what I'm saying, happen. And we got to do it right after the debut. Right. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no cap. You know what I mean? Mean, this ain't no cap. Hear, man. Hey, we on, we on a fucking live interview. This ain't right. no cap, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm not about to see her and cap to you. So he probably wrote see. this like last year, man. I've been trying, I definitely I, wrote this song I, last year and I, I made sat on him it like I told him like, dude, this is the hit for the summer. When you when you put that when you put that hook out there, like I told him, this is what we coming out to this summer. Like, we gotta do it. We've yeah. really been sitting on that one since like January, February. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite hooks you've done. It's yeah, like, really. yeah, we had to do multiple versions of it because yeah, that, that yeah, hook is sure. so, so hard. It's gonna be turned up. Yeah. It's definitely gonna be turned. I can't wait for everybody to see this video and just hear mm -hmm. what uh, Jr. and Ivy did on there because that's it's like my all-time favorite right yeah. now. I know she be snapping, so I, no, I'm sure she, she went in on that. Definitely be going crazy. 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 Like, she <laughs> definitely. So. JR went crazy and then Ivy went crazy right behind him. Like, yeah. She did, she performed great. Like. Uh, you also do tattoos, right? Definitely do. Okay. Definitely How long do. you been doing that? Man, some years. Like before you got locked up? Yeah. Okay. I was shitty though. <laughs> <laughs> I was shitty as fuck. I was shitty. But now as I, as I you know, got older and had to do that time, I just started working on patience and slowing shit down and really, you know what I'm saying, working on my craft. Then I came home and I just killed them on the tattoos. Oh, shit. I told you got you your own shop or you be working somewhere else? Uh, shout out my dude Tattoo Tone, man. That's my brother, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, True Ink Tattooing. Okay. So uh, he had, he, he, he pulled me in and gave me a, a, a chair, you know what I'm saying? Gave me the opportunity to do what I, I love doing. Yeah, that's love. And how yeah. many tattoos you got yourself? Did you lose count I years ago? Did. I definitely, definitely did. I definitely asked him every yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> they ask me all the time. I mean, he's got some space on the legs, you know? <laughs> just, yeah, like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know what's wrong with him. I ain't done yet, though. <laughs> I definitely asked her, like, bro, how many tattoos do you got? I don't be knowing. You still getting more, though? Yeah. He don't got no what, What's the latest one you got there? Uh, He got to get his elbow done. <laughs> he gotta get his elbow down. <laughs> Bro, you gotta get your elbow huh? down. You said what? Nah, he gotta get his elbow. <laughs> My elbow. <laughs> yeah, he shoot a lot of elbows. You was best he supposed to get that so shit down. Like, he nah, the latest one though. Down. The latest one though is it, I, it's the one on my face. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. You gonna get more on your face, ain't you? Nah. Nah. Y'all believe that? Nah. I'm, the elbow, elbow is the next one. He oh, ran from the elbow. Nah. They don't need no more. For my me. mama ain't gonna let me get no more in my face. But if she don't, did know, she, she let don't you know. get that first one? I'm gonna say <laughs> she probably didn't know you was getting that first one. Then. <laughs> right. He gotta get his elbow done. He running from that tattoo. For sure. A uh, new project in the works, or you've just focused on singles and videos? Uh, I don't know. Like it sounds like you got enough music for a project, right? Know? Like I definitely, uh, I, I'm definitely thinking about dropping an album release. You know what I'm saying for my birthday. When's your birthday? July second. Okay, man, that's real soon, man. Yeah, Look, wait, so, you got two weeks. Yeah, that's cool. You yeah, yeah, gotta talk about the clothing brand. Yeah, like, we you got a lot of stuff in the work. Yeah, clothing talk about brands, the clothing brand. What? You know what I'm saying? Um, Is that Jersey Solid, part of the clothing brand? Yeah, hundred okay. Solid E N T, man. You know what I'm saying? This is this. This is how we uh, this is how we stepping. Hmm. So, clothing brand. Uh, you got a website set up for the clothing? <coughs> huh? You got a website set up for the clothing? Nah, not yet. Cause we still coming up with more designs right now. Okay. We trying to we trying to figure out how we want to really like market a hundred solid without you know what I'm saying in, in different ways as far as like the kids and all that stuff too. Okay. We definitely in the brand. We building our brand. Yeah. Give yeah. it about a year, and it's probably gonna be we up next. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We definitely up next. For sure. What other uh, uh, you know businesses you trying to get into then with the brand? Uh, everything. We, we everything for real, for real. Like <laughs> I, I, everything. Mm -hmm. I ain't turning down no 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 business right. proposition. You know what I mean? I'm gonna make sure if I if I got a, a business proposition and it come good, it's like 
We're going to make something work. Okay. We're going to make something work. We're definitely moving into real estate, our clothing brand, our car lot. Yeah, for sure. You guys got any cars wrapped with the with the logo and all that? Not yet. I'm trying to convince JR to wrap his Challenger. He won't do it. Let's pop off. He won't Man. do it. That car don't go for 35 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> he got a Charger and he driving real slow. Like. <laughs> but like, I definitely, we definitely been trying to convince him to wrap it in roses because that's his that's his brand, J Rose. Okay. It's yeah. definitely on the back of our shirts, like. Um, our clothing sure. brand is up next. No, nah, we definitely, we definitely coming up with some stuff. Sure. And what's the music scene like in Columbus right now today? Uh, it's definitely fire. It's fire. Like, yeah. It's super fire. I just what's feel like I feel like it's some it's some motherfuckers that got some heat that ain't dropped shit yet. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what's our name? Uh, a little bit. We we definitely we definitely got you know what I'm saying. We and we're going to be doing more shows in the city. We're definitely going to start bringing out um, the independent artists in Columbus, um, hosting shows and stuff like that. We partner up with a, uh, a female in Columbus um, that's actually already doing it. JR, he already a major part of that. Okay. Uh, why don't you guys go ahead and plug your social media so everyone knows where to follow you at. Whoever wants to start. My my Instagram is at Young Deal Music. That's that's all my social media is Instagram, YouTube. Yeah, you can find me there. Nah, you gotta go, bro. Go <laughs> ahead, bro. <laughs> go ahead, bro. You always want to give me the mic, man. Like, uh, all right, you can find me at uh, on Instagram at official J Rose. Uh, on Facebook, John Rose. Y'all already know what it is. On Apple Music. On all platforms. Yeah. It's What's on your all name platforms. On there? What? On Apple Music. Nah. J Rose the Foreign Kid. Just like that. Yeah. Say that shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can follow me, uh, D Ron Morris, Facebook, um, Brody Brown on IG. We got cars. JR got clothes. He got music. Yeah. Like, he lit. JR yeah. just lit. I'm trying to tell you, man. It's a movie. <laughs> Dylan, he got music. It's definitely. Gonna, Hunter Solid, we up next. Yeah, like, we definitely I'm up next. I'm trying to tell you. Y'all might as well pull the plug when Hunter Solid come in, man. We up next. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Rest in peace, Pauly, man. Say it two times. For sure. For sure. Y'all got any shout outs you want to give before we wrap it up here? Uh, I want to shout out uh, uh, Young Nitty. <laughs> shout out to Young Nitty. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Uncle Joe Podcast, you know what I'm saying? Uh, right, right, right. Shout out to a lot of the little promoters. Bit. Little bit. Little bit. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to a lot of a, a lot of promoters in the city because that's who really helping us as artists in the city get to where we need to be at. And our hundred solid family, man, because we coming, we a hundred. Yeah, for sure. And we definitely a prime pressure. We, we definitely a prime pressure, man. Yeah. We definitely apply pressure. No sin coming out.